You can't sleep, asked Mrs. Silton, me as well. Number two on the way, she smiled. At least I'm not barefoot. She then laughed, like it was a joke. But despite having traveled the world, I had no idea what she meant. I suppose everyone else will be up in a bit, I'll get breakfast started. In the morning everyone continued chatting, the subject soon got back round to the military takeover and the man in black, we need to do something, said the old lady, they've destroyed the peace talks with the robots, fighting could break out again in no time. I don't mean to sound overdramatic, but that would literally be the end of the world, explained Sim. Alice laughed, but the army, there's no way we can fight them, we've lost our band of thieves, and, in the words of that French professor, God rest his soul, we're just some old ladies. The old lady stood up, we just need to take back control of the satellite, we can broadcast a signal to the robots, those robot advisors, they might listen if they actually saw this new moon army. And those giant robots, they call them killbots, said Mrs. Silton as she showed me several photos. It seems the house was surrounded by hundreds of troops and a few robots so tall they dwarfed the building itself. So, I suggested we made our way there so fort and I could assess the situation. Mr. Logan had got the boat out of hiding, I now just had to sail it from the dock back to the estate. I took the fisherman's boat to the old man's estate. I knew you would come back here, came a horribly familiar voice. I should have made sure you were dead when I had the chance. It was the man in black. I have personally modified your nice virus, and now, with one flick of a switch, I'll finish the job.
It's pointless now, said Alice, we might as well give up. I don't know, maybe we can arrange a truce, I mean if we agree. But Sim couldn't even finish his sentence. Mrs. Silton just sighed, I think she was lost for words. We really need Barry and Logan, if we're going to recapture the house, said the old lady. Mrs. Silton explained she had phoned him earlier. Apparently he sounded fine, at least until she mentioned coming home, then he started screaming. I couldn't understand him at all. He wants nothing to do with saving the world. His words not mine, sorry. The old lady sighed, I was worried he might say that, I take it Logan stayed with him. Logan's more of a dog than the dog is, laughed Alice. The old lady was only really worried we would be outgunned. She said I would be the secret weapon as I would be able to sneak back into the house. That's true, said Sim, if we cause enough of a distraction. As long as you can get up to the roof, we'll be able to take control of the satellite. Hopefully the virus hasn't reached all the other robots around the world. Suddenly, all hell broke loose. The old lady, Alice and the others opened fire. This was just the distraction I needed to make my way up to the roof. I was shocked. However, this time not just by the giant brain, but rather what the man in black had done to him. I do not want to, said Mr. Deck, but I will shoot you if I must. Why don't you give up, said the man in black. Anton knew which side was right. Why don't you join us? I know we've had our differences but I see potential in you, you could be my new right hand man. You see. There's a link between you and I. Without me you wouldn't even be here. The two brothers designed and built you. But what nobody ever told you is, they were funded by their third brother. Me. I was speechless. How could he, this completely evil man, have something to do with my creation? Yeah. Thank you. A minor setback, said the man in black as he disconnected a piece of the satellite hardware. I just need to take this core unit and hitch it up to one of the killbots. In fact, that will make the virus signal even stronger. Mr. Deck, said the man in black, would you be so kind as to watch the robot? Shoot him if he tries anything. Mr. Deck lowered his gun. You little yellow bastard, he said, you'd better run.
Somehow the man in grey had snuck up behind Mrs. Silton. I tried to shout down, but no one could hear me. Oi, shouted a familiar voice. Step away from my wife. The man in grey bragged with every blow. Who he'd hurt. Who he'd tortured. How he'd made the world a better place. As he raised the gun to Mr. Silton's head, he said, You're out of your depth. I'm a professional. I used the kill for the CIA. Mr. Silton just smiled and said, Yeah. And I'm a proper c- with the rest of the great and good now stuck on the moon, and the man in black taken care of, it was reasonably easy to convince his troops to surrender. Signals came through from all over the planet and soon the people began rebuilding civilization. And again, I was heralded as a hero. Soon the representatives from around the world held their first united meeting, and I was invited to give a speech. The old lady gently examined me, while Sim attached a cable from the diagnostic machine, I've got some bad news, said the old lady as she took my hand, the virus is rampant in your system, it's not as bad as it was with Betty Fluffers and Fort, but it's still destroying your circuitry. I'm thinking, said Sim, it must have something to do with consciousness. Yours seems more equipped to fight. We'll still need to do something, said the old lady with a serious look. If we replace all of the affected parts we... Come on mate, said Mr. Silton, you know they can help. But I explained that it was too painful, and hurt so much. Just having my diagnostic panel open was excruciating. So you mean, you can feel things. But, you're not supposed to be able to. The virus hasn't completely taken over, Sim explained. But I don't know how long you've got, maybe months, maybe years. <coughs> when you, well. If it all gets a bit too much, said the old lady, come back here and we'll look after you. You should try to get everything done that you want to before then though, said Sim. You know, maybe complete your quest, get your million things, play some games, I mean just do all the things, bucket list mate. Interrupted Mr. Silton, go paint the town red. Remember, said Alice, should you need us? Yes, should you need us, said Mr. Logan, we'll be right here, said the old lady, waiting for you.